So Apple's Freeform application came out a few years ago now at this point, but for some reason it doesn't get as much love or notoriety as some of those other native Apple ecosystem applications that we've grown to love. So in this video, what I want to do is walk you guys through 10 tips and tricks of Freeform that you probably don't even know are possible inside of that application. So without further ado, let's talk about Freeform and maybe, just maybe, you'll be using Freeform more often after this video. Let's get into it. Well, all right, everyone, let's get right into this video. And just to preface this, I am running an M4 iPad Pro on the latest version of iPadOS 18.2. But again, if you have any iPad running 18.2, then all of this will be available to you, except for one option, which has to do with Apple Intelligence. But again, you know exactly who you are if you have access to Apple Intelligence. But let's open up Freeform. So if you go over here, we'll type in Freeform and this is what you're greeted with. Okay, so the first one's gonna be all about shapes and how to utilize them, right? So first and foremost, if you do have an Apple Pencil, you do have the automatic shape recognition, meaning if I draw a circle and hold it down, it'll turn it into a perfect circle, and same thing goes with the square and pretty much any shape that you throw at it. A line with an arrow if you want to, it'll make that perfect for you, so you can rest assured that if you can't physically draw a perfect shape, you will be able to automatically draw it with shape recognition. But you also have this tab right here, which is gonna be your shapes tab. This allows you to pretty much input any shape that's available to you in the Apple ecosystem or in this native situation. And you can have geometry shapes, objects, animals, nature situations, food, symbols. You pretty much have every single thing that you would want. So for instance, to give you an example of how much you can manipulate each one of these shapes, we'll tap on here and you can see here that I have an orange. Now, of course, you can open this up, make it larger, make it smaller. And then what you do here is you hold it down and then you get your options. So you can change the color of it over here to gray if I want to, to this aqua color. You can give it an outline if you want to, so I can make it like this. I can do the dotted line. I can do a more dotted line or a solid line. And then you can also change just how thick those lines are if you want to, as well as the color of the border. So if I wanna make this a blue border or a dark blue or even red, I can also do that. And then you have your ellipsis button, which allows you to have a bunch of different other options. So you have your back and front, which lets you arrange where you want those shapes to be. You have your normal edits like cut, copy, paste, duplicate, and you can even lock it. You can change the shape, you can break it apart which is one of the cooler things. So if I tap on this, you can break it apart and each one of these now becomes its own shape if you want to. So I can grab this, move the slice over, move this slice over, and then you can group them separately if you want to. So that is how you can manipulate shapes when it comes to all the different form factors and colors and borders and pretty much the sky's the limit. So then if I hold down on this and long press on that, now this basically becomes its own shape and you can do whatever you see fit from then on. So I love this little aspect of all the shapes and it's something that I didn't really know you could do up until recently. And this will work with pretty much any shape that you pull down from this little toolbar menu. Another really nice one is going to be the ability to embed photos, videos, and even links into your actual free form. So you can see here that I have a couple of different ones here. So these are just photos that I dragged into here and it's very easy to do. So if I grab my actual doc, move this over here, I have the slide overview. If I wanna, let's say, move this over right here, I can long press on here and it'll highlight just the actual footage, move me over there. So then I'm able to resize it and treat this bait pretty much as any other shape. And you can see that I connected the dot right there, but we'll talk about that in a second. And then you can treat this like any other shape. You can resize it, make it bigger. You have the ability to crop it. You can make it bigger to see exactly what's going on. And you have your ellipsis option down here, which gives you all the different options as well. You can even change the shadow if you want to. So remove or add the shadow. You have a bunch of different options when it comes to this, which is great to see. And then same thing applies for links. So you can see that this is an actual Apple link. So if I tap on this, you can actually click on this and edit the link. You can view the link if you want to, which will open it up over here. And it's very easy. So if I wanna go over here, let's say we wanna to go to YouTube and I wanna import that link, we'll copy it. We'll go over here, we'll copy it. Then we'll long press down here and we'll be able to paste it. And then you can see that we have a nice little tab right here for the YouTube application or the YouTube link, which is great to see. So if you need to share links, and I like how it looks like from a UI perspective that you have a little bit of a drop shadow, you're able to distinctly see that it is a URL versus an image and just a way to actually collaborate in real time to be able to do this. And now for the next tip, let's say you do wanna lock some of these in place and you don't want anybody to be able to move them. You can then go into any one of these assets, whether it is a link or an image or even one of these post-it notes, you can long press, click on the ellipses right here and then actually lock it in place. So this means that you cannot move it, you cannot make it larger, you cannot make it smaller and you can only view it. So you can tap on this little view button to go back to the website as you can see right here with Safari or you can unlock it and then you're able to make it bigger again, you're able to move it again. So that's great to see. If you're collaborating in real time with other people and maybe you have some personal assets that you wanna keep in place, you can do that with any object in here. So again, if you tap on here, click on the ellipses right here, 
we can lock it and now this person or this image cannot be moved whatsoever. Now one of my absolute favorite things about Freeform is the fact that it's technically or almost an infinite canvas, meaning that if I zoom in and out, I can pinch the zoom, you can see that I have different aspects over here. So I have a math section, I have some post-it notes, I have a little drawing over here, we have what we were working on over here earlier, and you, again, you can zoom out as much as you want and move it around as you see fit. So just to show you guys how to navigate this, again, you can pinch the zoom as you see fit, but if you notice, if I'm pinching even closer or farther away, a little percentage shows up down here. So if you tap on here, you're able to zoom to selection, zoom to fit content, or even zoom all the way out to 10%. Click on here to zoom all the way into 400%, which is going to be the maximum that you can go, and that allows you to really navigate this infinite canvas. And then in that same light, we do have something called Scenes, which was the most recent addition to the Freeform application, which allows you to actually grab one of these and make an initial scene. So if I zoom in here and I want to make this a specific scene to be able to navigate towards, tap on here, we're going to add this scene, it's going to see what it sees there, and then every single time I go into here, let's say I go to this other scene over here which I was playing with earlier, I can now go into here with almost like a table of contents, tap over here, and then immediately it brings me to that scene in the same aspect ratio and zoom ratio that I was in before. So it's a great way to be able to navigate this giant canvas of the Freeform application. And you can even edit these individually. So if I tap on the ellipses, you can rename it, you can print it, and you can even export the scene as a PDF, which we will elaborate with in a little bit. So now let's quickly talk about asset management as well as layering management. So you can see here, I wrote this little blurb, which is kind of funny, but a lot of people like to be able to layer certain shapes or text or wording, depending on what situations they're in. So an easy way to do this is literally tapping on any shape that you have, clicking the ellipses right here, and then you're gonna be able to pick between back and front. So if I wanna send this back behind it, I can go back, and if I wanna set it in front, it'll send it to the front. But now, let's say this situation's over here, it's layered over here, but it's layered underneath there. If I wanna layer both of these over, I can just grab them, and I can long press on the screen. You can see that you get a little animation there. If I show you guys again, and a little animation, it selects both of these, and what I can do here is treat them as one object. So I'm gonna send them both back, and now both of these will be behind these other shapes. So just a way to manage the different assets and be able to select multiple of these shapes or assets or images or links at the same time. Now do keep in mind that the second you use your Apple Pencil, so if I tap the Apple Pencil, it's gonna go into writing mode, and if I long press on here, it won't really let me use it as a cursor which is kind of unfortunate. So I do recommend if you are using an Apple Pencil, make sure that you have this option turned off. Draw with finger because it gets a little confused if you leave this turned on and it won't know if you're long pressing or won't know if you're trying to use your finger as a cursor or use your finger as a writing tool. So make sure that's turned off and then to be able to get out of the drawing mode, just click anywhere on the screen, then long press and you're able to select pretty much everything because everything that this canvas touches turns into a separate asset, whether it is text, whether it's written notes, whether it's shapes that you created or shapes that you inserted. So this next one is a quick one, but it's the ability to export not only the scenes, but your entire canvas as a PDF. For some reason, Apple hides it because if you press a share button where you think it's gonna be, it doesn't actually show up in here. So what you have to do is actually press on this little drop down menu and you can actually export as a PDF, the whole board or the scene. If I tap on the board, it'll start to create a PDF and then I can send it to my files. So let me save that. Let me put it into my desktop. We'll save that. And then if you go into your file system, you will be able to see it. So let's open this up over here. And you can see that this is going to be the entire board that you can then use as a PDF and share it much easier, especially if you're sharing it with somebody who does not have something like an iPad or something that has free form. So being able to export not only the whole board, but also individual scenes as a PDF is a great little add-on. So now let's go into the math section, which I created earlier. And if you guys have been around and been able to see, Apple did introduce math notes with iPadOS 18, which has been awesome and really fun to use. So if we go over here and let's say we wanna do a two plus four will equal that, it's gonna ask you to solve it. But now if you want it to solve it automatically, we'll go back to this drop down menu, we'll go to the math results and we're gonna do insert results. What that means is that no matter what, whenever it sees an equation, it won't ask you to solve it or suggest to solve it, it'll just solve it for you. So if we go down here, let's do you know 17 times four equals and it'll show up immediately. And then again, it works like any other math note. So if I wanna divide that by four, it should give me 17. And if I wanna multiply that by 14, it should give me another answer. My handwriting is probably really bad right now, so it's not recognizing it, but just be aware that I can do that. But one other thing to note when it comes to math notes is that in free form, it does not graph. So if you type this equation out in the regular notes application, it'll actually graph it for you. But for some reason, 
In free form, it does not do that, so do keep that in mind if that's something that you want to do, which I do believe is a missed opportunity. A couple more aha moments which I love to show off is going to be the ability to create sticky note mind maps or just mind maps in general. So if I go over here and let's go into the scene that I created over here, you can see that I am able to create mind maps with just the sticky notes and whatever's built in to the actual freeform application. And there's a couple things that I want to show off here. First and foremost, it's being able to create the sticky notes. To add one, you just tap on here, you move it around, you can resize it how you see fit. It isn't constrained, you can constrain it if you want to keep it a perfect square, but that is how you create a sticky note. Next thing you can do is actually physically write on it with your pencil over here, so you can say hello if you want to, or you can double tap and actually write hello with handwritten text. So that's great to see. And then another thing that you might have noticed is, first, you have this little button right here, which for me is always turned on. I like to keep this turned on because it then allows me to see what I can actually grab and then connect after the fact. So you can see I have four arrows around each of these, and every single time I tap on an asset, those four arrows will be there. So for instance, if I want to grab this, and let's say grab an arrow and connect it to this one over here, I can then do that. And then when I move it around, tap on here, move this around, it's going to stay there and it's going to stay there forever, which I like to see. So no matter what happens, I'm able to then manipulate each of those lines without having to physically move those lines every single time that I move something like a sticky note or any other note or shape for that matter. And now the very last thing I do want to bring up, which I have been kind of playing with a little bit, but I haven't been able to actually figure it out 100%, but I figured it'd be worth showing off at least somewhat. So if I go down here to this other scene that I created, you can see that I drew a house, right? And this is actually something that came from Image Playgrounds, but if I long press on here, highlight the entire image that I drew, click on the three dots, you can see that there is an add to playground button. So I can add it to the playground, type in something like house, press done, and then it's going to generate a house based on the image that I actually drew, which isn't great to be totally honest, but this is the only way that I've personally seen to get image playgrounds or some sort of Apple intelligence feature into freeform. And this is the only way to do this right now. And that's why I said, if you need to have an M powered iPad or the A17 iPad mini in order to use something like the Apple intelligence feature in playgrounds for that. But for right now, it seems like it's not made for the freeform application. It's just kind of thrown in here by accident. Just something to keep in mind for a future iteration or a future update. But that's all the tips and tricks that I wanted to show off. Let's finish up this video. So that was just about do for this video, everybody. Hopefully you learned a thing or two about Freeform. And what I love about it the most is that it's pretty much an infinite canvas of what is possible from actually physically being an infinite canvas of adding as much or as little as you want to, to being able to collaborate in real time, to having different shapes and sticky notes and different kind of ways to tie it together with other native applications with links and photos and videos. So now you know what is possible with Freeform and definitely stay tuned because I'm going to have a full walkthrough. This was just kind of 10 tricks and tips of the actual application to get you a little bit more familiar with what exactly you can do with Freeform. And just so you are aware, it does work on iOS as well as iPadOS and macOS if you do want to play with it in different pieces of hardware. But that'll do it, everybody. If you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. If you like the wallpapers that were shown off in this video, definitely consider being a channel member because that gives you access to monthly wallpapers that, again, we update on a monthly basis. But if you want to watch more videos like this one, definitely check out one of these videos right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando. Happy creating, everybody. Peace.